The purpose for this series of devotions is to help a person to understand the value of the local church in their day-to-day -day lives. But it is also designed to encourage us to use our gifts in the church and to be more involved in each other's lives. The church is not merely an institution. When God gave you new life through his son, he welcomed you into his family. We become part of what the Bible calls the ecclesia, the church, the people who have been called out of the world and into a relationship with God himself. We are united with one another by being united to Jesus Christ. And so I entitled this series, Our Church, Christ's Home. Because of that union that we have in Christ, we are his church, his family. We are the ones that he has called out of the world and brought into a union, into a relationship with himself. Now, as we all know, there are responsibilities and privileges of being a member of a family. And so also, this series is focused on those two truths, the privileges and responsibilities of being in the family of God. And so we started this series, we started in the narthex, and we, and we pointed out that it is both an entrance and an exit. It is an entrance in that we welcome people to join our church family, to be encouraged and built up. And it is an exit because we are called to go out into the community, showing the love of God and putting into practice what we have learned and seen and heard within the Word of God through the ministry of the church. Then after the narthex, we went into the nursery and the children's, and the, uh, children's Sunday school classroom. And I, yeah, and I made a point, and, and, and I hope you remember this, that children are not merely the future of the church. They are a vital part of the church family right now. The Christian faith has always been a family faith. We paid attention especially to the vow that members take at every baptism. I would encourage you to fulfill your vow, to fulfill your vow by participating and assisting the parents in the nurture of their children by taking part of the children's ministry, by praying for the families, especially praying for the children. And remember, I, I encourage you to get your directory out and, and write down in a, on a separate page all the names of the children in our church and pray for them throughout the week. And then, of course, I ask you to be praying for Todd and Mandy Patterson. Todd is going to be our new director of young, young families. Well, tonight I'm taking you to a rather odd place in the church building. Most of you will never enter this place or the next place that we will go. And yet without these rooms, we would not be as effective in, in doing what we are called to do. First, tonight I'm, I'm standing in a closet, a rather small closet. Uh, that contains the main electrical panel to the whole building. It's at this point that the power comes into the building and, and then is, is separated and goes out through the rest of the building. There are several other smaller fuse panels, but this is the main, oh, I'm just, just kidding, just kidding. This is the main, <laughs> stick to the text. This is the main panel that powers the entire church building. Tonight we are considering the pow what pow we are considering the power that fuels the ministry of the church. What makes the church effective in a world that despises what the church proclaims? Again, let me ask you that because you may still be distracted as, as I am. What makes the church effective in a world that despises what the church proclaims? Jesus taught his disciples about the church in Matthew 16. He asked them a question. He said, who do people say that I am? And they gave several answers. And then he said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And as typical, the apostle Peter spoke up for the whole. And he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 17 and 18, 
Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is building his church upon the rock, and hell cannot stop him. The question has always been, what is the rock that he's referring to? Is it Peter, or is it Peter's confession? The Roman Catholics have always taught that Peter is the rock, and therefore Peter was the first pope, and everyone that followed after him, the next pope. That he is the rock. We believe that Peter's confession is the rock, that Jesus is the rock, the Son of the living God. He is the rock. In fact, Peter himself would later teach in 1 Peter chapter 2 that Jesus is the cornerstone upon which the church is built, not himself. And so the first lesson to be learned on the effectiveness of the church in a culture that is so dead set against it is that Christ is the one who is building his church. No one is capable of standing in the way or preventing the Son of God from building his church. Even hell itself cannot prevail against Christ. Hell itself cannot stop Christ from building his church. The challenge for us is to make sure that our plans and our expectations are firmly established on the glory of Christ and not on our own desires. Do we want Jesus to be praised and magnified or are we wanting our own needs to be met? Now you also need to understand that all of our needs will be met when our focus is on bringing Christ all the glory. When we seek the glory, when we seek the praise of men, when that becomes our priority, then it is likely that the Father will discipline us because He loves us as a child. And He will even withhold blessings from us until we repent. Christ is the power behind the building of His church. Therefore, we must seek to bring Him all the glory. Next, we'll move into a, another room, another place where we can see the effect of the power of Christ at work upon us or within us.